uh, doing the announcements this morning. So here I am. Uh, we are th- very thankful, of course, for the freedom to gather in Jesus' name. And uh, we're thankful for everyone that's here today. And we pray that this will be a blessing for you and your families um, that you, as you set aside the time for this today. Uh, for uh, those of you who don't know, or maybe you do know, but you just would like to hear about it again, uh, there are a lot of people that have gone to El Salvador this week to uh, build homes for people in need. Uh, representing uh, the SCMC are Tim and Karen Allen, Paul Babcock, Pete Babcock, Pat Halls, Julia Henderson, Rose Schofield, Deb Firth, Dave, and Amanda Prasad. And that's why I'm up here and not Dave. <laughs> so, so we can be uh, thankful for what they're doing and remember them in our prayers today. Uh, our benevolence focus for the month of April is to recognize the good work that is being done at Forest Fritter Friends. Tom and Janet Cullen, who will be with us next week, are operating a training center to equip adults with disabilities to develop work skills that will further their own purposes. All funds designated as benevolence or forest fritter friends will be directed toward this work. Again, that's for the month of April. A reminder that Senior Sing is happening every Wednesday during April from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. There is great encouragement as Aaron Johns leads those gathered in song, encouragement from the word of God and some tasty treats. Our El Salvador team, oh, our Salvador team, I already mentioned that, so I skipped number three. Uh, tomorrow, uh, April the 8th, uh, we remind you that uh, to use caution, uh, there's something special and, and uh, interesting happening in the sky tomorrow, or maybe you've never heard about this, but there is an eclipse uh, on its way here. It's heading our direction. Uh, so just you know, follow the prescribed cautions for that. Uh, the safest solution is to stay indoors, Uh, during the peak hours, and follow the Lambton Health guidelines uh, that they may post for you. Uh, Your prayer, uh, oh yeah, so this is where I'm supposed to pray. (laughs) I'm just reading the sheet. So um, yeah, so I would also like to read Psalm 133. So let me just uh, open up my uh, Bible app here. Of course, it opens a lot faster when I'm not standing in front of a crowd of people. Okay, Uh, Psalm 133 is about uh, living in harmony. Uh, How delightfully good when brothers live together in harmony. It's like fine oil on the head, running down on the beard, running down Aaron's beard onto his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon falling on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has appointed the blessing, life forevermore. Uh, Lord, as we uh, gather here today, uh, we've come to hear from you. Uh, We pray that uh, as Joel uh, speaks today, that you'll speak through him. Uh, and uh, you will open our hearts and our minds to what you have to say for us. Uh, bless those who are in El Salvador, Lord. I pray that you give them strength and encouragement and peace as they are down there, and help them have a great time. Maybe it will be a blessing to those uh, that are going to receive homes and just receive encouragement for them. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for emceeing today, Matt. And... Sarnia EMC friends, it's good to be back and to worship together. And as mentioned, my name is Joel Zanting, and I think you know this guy, Jarrett Persad, who uh, is also a part of my family and glad to visit uh, with family today. This is my sister Stephanie Zanting, who lives in Guelph with us, and we have some other, we brought our our own fan base here this morning. Um, So we're here together as family to catch an Easter celebration, but how grateful we are to worship God and think about God's reconciling heart, and so we invite you as you're able to stand and to share with us in song. We have a new song in, but not right off the bat, so let's sing praise to our God. alone my hope is found he is my life my strength my song this cornerstone this song 
by darkness slain. Well, as we said, we're going to introduce a song that may be new to some of you and familiar to others. Just a song that says when we come to the end of our, our rope, we can always give praise to God. We can always find him in the midst of the struggles of life. We can always utter a hallelujah if that's all we've got. And that God would actually renew us uh, with his joy. And so in gratitude, let's lift up our hearts. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing this song 
as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Just one move with my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a psalmist invites us to sing and declare to our souls what's true. Let's sing it out. So come on, my soul, but don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song, because you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned 
singing. Please be seated. Hey, it is finally time for Kid Jam, for those who've been waiting for that. Um, Mr. Schofield will be teaching with our leaders today. 
And uh, children ages two to grade six can make their way down to the Kid Jam Room. Parents of children ages two to five need to escort their children, signing them in and then picking them back up at the end of the service. Jared, what have I done? Are you stuck? <laughs> I'm tangled. You got it? Separated? Thanks. Back in the day, we didn't have all these wires hooking up, you know. Here we go. Hey, Joel. Hi. How are you? I'm I just well. randomly happen to be up here and I have some questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, the interview portion? Yeah, it's very Excellent. convenient, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, it, so what brings you here today? Other than my car. Yeah, other than your car. Yeah. Well, um, one is my ongoing relationship and friendship with the Sarnia EMC and it feels like decades of checking in, and so it's a great honor to be invited to come and share. But uh, part of that is that I, I've worked through a transition where I used to be in leadership in our own denomination, the Evangelical Missionary Church, and now I'm working basically for two global movements through the evangelical uh, churches across many denominations in Canada. And, uh, and so I've come today with a, a message that's on my heart in terms of the reconciling heart of God that kind of comes out of that global picture and hopefully will uh, be meaningful to share with all of you folks today. I very much look forward to hearing all about that. Uh, now, there's something called the Peace and Reconciliation Network, I understand. Can you tell me something about that? Yes, I would love to. <laughs> um, so... One of the roles that I have is a Canadian coordinator for the Peace and Reconciliation Network. And across the world, uh, this is an, a network organization that's trying to equip the evangelical body, people who follow Jesus and believe in Jesus and believe in the evangel, the good news, to live out the peacemaking way of Jesus and the reconciling heart of God. And you can imagine that looks very different like in uh, sub-Saharan Africa than it does in Jerusalem. One of my colleagues is a Palestinian Christian who lives in Jerusalem, doing peacemaking and reconciling work there. And, uh, and so the contexts change, but the concept of God's heart behind it does not change. And so I'm working across many denominations to say, what's already here? What's God already doing? And how can we resource one another better, both formal and informal education, and resources for churches, and to begin to help pull together uh, churches like yours that have a lot of, uh, of emphasis on how to be available to your own community, to see the, the heart of God extended to many organizations and individuals. And not every church is functioning this way. So how do we help spur that on more and more? Oh, that sounds awesome. Thank you. Uh, so in Canada, what does that look like specifically here? Yeah, and that's the journey that I've been on the last nine months. I've taken a posture of stepping into this role, not with a briefcase or a, a, you know, a magic bullet with all the ideas worked out, but to, to really uh, do a listen, learn, lead model and to talk with denominational leaders and uh, ask them for stories of this peacemaking way and this reconciling heart of God lived out and then to begin to connect with them and hear their story. And that builds a network. Because when we hear peace and reconciliation in Canada, it's amazing how many of us hear the Truth and Reconciliation Commission around Indigenous and non-Indigenous reconciliation. And that is certainly a part of it, but I'll be able to unpack a little bit wider lens of God's heart so that it can be applied to that uh, response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. But it's not limited. It's not just social justice. It's not just a political concept. It's in the scriptures, in the heart of God. And so, um, so what it looks like in Canada is to really help individuals and churches 
to see themselves as centers of reconciliation, how we do that in our workplaces and in our family life and in our neighborhoods or uh, in our rural settings and as churches. Wow, that sounds really awesome. Uh, I'd love to hear all about that. Uh, tell us about something called the Lausanne Movement. Uh, what is its purpose and what is it? Yeah, so the other job, I have two part-time jobs right now, and one is with the Peace and Reconciliation Network, and the other is to help the Lausanne Movement, which is a 50-year-old or organization that was started in Lausanne, Switzerland. So if, if you're thinking, what Lausanne are we talking about? I'm hungry. I want some lasagna. But uh, Lausanne, Switzerland was the site in 1974 of the first gathering where Billy Graham, who is a familiar name in a lot of Christian circles, and John Stott, an Anglican priest from the UK, gathered leaders from across the world together to say, we need to listen together to the Spirit of God for the gaps in how we fulfill God's mission, how we participate with God in His mission in the world. And that sparked a movement that has existed for 50 years and this, this year will be the fourth time that there's a global gathering of people from every continent in Seoul, Korea, this coming September, out of which come uh, ideas and thought that, that are helping to give clarity. So I'll give you some examples. One is that we are maybe familiar with a concept called the 1040 window, uh, which is right across uh, the north of Africa and through the Middle East and into India and Asia, and how that is an area of the world where the, there has not been as much exposure to Jesus and the good news of the kingdom. And so that concept came out of a Lausanne gathering where the, the language for unreached people groups was formed as these leaders came together. And it's become an important part of how we pray for the good news of Jesus to continue to spread all around the world. But that's the kind of thing where those ideas come up. And Lausanne is now coming together for a fourth Congress to say, what are the gaps in how we need to participate with God in his mission? And what clarity will come from that? So it's a lot of listening, a lot of writing, a lot of clarity that comes from that. Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, how do these great organizations connect with a church like our church? Thanks for asking a tough question. <laughs> Welcome. Because uh, a lot of time, there, there's a, a trickle-down effect because I'm spending a lot of time with denominational leaders at that level. And um, heads of seminaries uh, in Canada, heads of denominations like our own, the Evangelical Missionary Church, and many others and resourcing them and saying, what will be helpful for you in all of your churches? And so there's some trickle down of, um, an example of this is um, last month, I was able to present a workshop on conflict transformation for another denomination uh, at one of their main, main conferences. And so it's that kind of spirit where we're serving the denominations, but with the, the grassroots engagement that there are other like-minded churches uh, for Sarnia EMC to get to know and learn from uh, in your journey, and that'll be mostly through my relationship with Pastor Dave, but, um, but there may be other ways in which, it, you know, God brings up a, a, a point of, uh, of connection. One of the cool things is that um, another denomination are starting church-based education to equip people to live their faith at work and by giving them basically a Bible college certificate, but it's done through your own church. And, and the, there's a cooperation with local churches. So does Sarnia already have something like that? Would that be beneficial to also give more of a, a teaching and a framework for some of this reconciling heart of God and, and being peacemakers where you are and doing that with other churches locally? So it could look like something like that, but that would be discerned in, in ongoing relationship and conversation. Thank you. Uh, it, or would you be available today if anyone had any further questions to talk to you after? No, I don't like talking with people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and so I've got some, actually some, some literature out there. Um, and as I share a message today, there's also um, free course material that, um, that I'll give some more instruction on later. But there are some books that can get started, devotional books and, and so on. 
Um, and just a place to, to start your own learning if you're a reader uh, or have linked to our, our podcasts and that sort of thing. So there can be a way to grow and learn in this together. And yes, I'd love to talk with anyone uh, after the service. Is there anyone on your podcast that, that we know that, that might be? <laughs> well, that? actually, that is interesting. Um, so in terms of, of that, we, uh, our podcast is global. So there are some really interesting stories that uh, are in the works of people that you would know. But I think the recent history, probably a lot of people you don't yet know. Okay. But I'd love to introduce you to them and their stories because uh, they're quite inspirational. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for this. And I know we're going to, uh, I'm doing multiple things this morning um, because cause I like you and <laughs> Pastor Dave asked me. So, and I get to do music with, with Jarrett and Stephanie. So, we're going to do one more piece here um, before the message. And once again, if you're able to stand, you can please join us and do that.
the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown tell the world of the treasure you've found amen please be seated Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we have to sing praise to your name, to worship you, to declare your goodness, to know how in everything, in every situation that we face, every circumstance, that your nearness, your presence brings light, brings levity, brings hope, helps us see a way through. And we're grateful, Lord, for a chance to, to learn from your word together this morning, to experience the blessing of processing and, and, and learning and receiving conviction around your Spirit's guidance in our lives personally and as a church. We thank you, Lord, for all of the ministry that's happening in this community because of ordinary, everyday followers of Jesus, not out of ego, but out of a heart of service, want to just serve and bless our community. And thank you that that extends to the partnership in El Salvador through Shelter. We pray not only for the, the Canadians there, but for the Salvadorians who will join in the building of homes this week and understanding who, uh, who could receive this as a blessing from God, that you would continue to go before them and open up new pathways, new, new conversations, new friendships to be able to share the heart of the love of God. And as we uh, exist here, Lord, to serve you today, would you continue to guide us in our worship as we look to your word together. We pray this in your name. Amen. I've come today to not talk a message of, um, you know, excitement about the ministries and organizations that Matt interviewed me over but simply for us to look at the heart of God uh, as a reconciling heart and to consider this message today in how God is calling us to be everyday peacemakers in an unreconciled world. And on screen, you'll see this uh, felt heart. Now, um, I know that not everyone will be into this today, but do we have a volunteer from each of the three sections to just, just raise your hand if you want to come forward. I have uh, something that I would like each section to do as we're beginning to share this message. And it's a simple task. If, uh, if you've ever thread uh, a bobby pin with some string through a hole, you can say yes to this assignment. So do I have those volunteers? I have one here. Thank you. Do I have one here? Who's, who's volunteering? All right, Sandra, and anyone in this section? All right, uh, Eleanor? Ellen, almost. That's great. Just come on forward, please. Um, what I have here are uh, some felt hearts, and Sandra, yours is here at the front. 
and Ellen, yours is there. And what I'd like for you to do is to work with some other people in your section and, uh, and just to be able to, to find two other people. One, one person hold each half of this heart and maybe just hold them up so that they can see that there are two parts with some holes and nobody's going to get hurt. They're bobby pins. And I'd like you just to work together, one with a thread and one holding each part. And just loop it through once and then you can pass it on to somebody else and the next three people can pick up and begin to put that together. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just explain this a little bit more. But yeah, don't do it alone. Do it together with others. And just go from front to back. You know how to sew. So um, as you're doing that, I want to set up an introduction. And once it's, once it's finished in the section, I'd like you to pass it through so everybody has a chance to touch it and hold on to it. And because there's an implication here for what we're looking at in the scriptures this morning. And I really like the, the two parts, the visual of the two parts of this broken heart. Um, when we think about um, how God is in the work of calling us to join him in bringing repair and restoration to things. The symbolism here is that there's a lot that we can look at our world and we hear it all the time. There's so much that's broken. But when we look to the scriptures, we read this in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Next slide. And when we think about this, there is a way of blessing that Jesus calls us into to be peacemakers in the world. And there's so much reason for peace to be established in our world today. We see the conflicts. We see all that's wrong in the world. But we are, in fact, those whom Jesus calls blessed when we're involved in peacemaking work. And I'll return to this text a little bit later today. Next slide, please. So I'd like to just explore two thoughts in this message this morning. First is that peacemaking and reconciling is, first and foremost, rooted in God's heart. It's rooted in God's heart, revealed in the Scriptures. That pursuing a world at peace and reconciling work is rooted in the Scriptures, and it's important, secondly, for every Christian and every church in an unreconciled world. And I, I just want to address these as two questions this morning with this little disclaimer, that I share these things understanding that there are a whole range of people, and that includes many who are skeptical of this idea of peace and reconciliation. Why is that? When we hear about this in the culture at large, and we go, oh, great, yeah, another, uh, another thing that we have to do. But we can really miss hearing about it from the heart of God. And as I've shared this message, even with those who are involved on the front lines of peacemaking and reconciling work, it's easy to locate it as just social justice, social action, human endeavor. So did everybody get a chance to, to hold that? Thank you. Uh, your section wins. You win a prize. I don't know what it is yet, but we'll come up with something wonderful. It's probably you get to all come up on Mass and close the service in prayer. Um, but it helps to look at this in our everyday context. So the next slide, please. The first question is, what is the basis for peacemaking and reconciling in the heart of God? Next slide. The word for wholeness or for, for peace is, in the Old Testament Hebrew scriptures, the word shalom. And shalom, you've probably heard sermons on this word. In the English language, uh, it often gets translated as peace, but it's a hard word to, to boil down to one word in English. And likewise, in the New Testament, that there is a, 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 a word called a reine in the Greek. And there's an author named Al Tizan who wrote a book called Whole and Reconciled, and he he says it this way, that the Hebrew word often translated into English as peace refers more to wholeness, justice, social harmony, health, 
well-being, and fullness of life, all which result in peace that is inner and spiritual and communal and global. So it's this really large concept, and it's complex, but it's a beautiful theme that re reflects the very nature of God, as well as God's will for all creation. And the shalom heart of God is what we're going to look at today, even though there's no English word to describe it. And so that's why Altizan summarizes it and boils it down in the way that you see at the bottom here, that a simple definition of shalom is that it means God's very best for me, for others, for all, and for all creation. And I think we'll work with that as a thought this morning. But as I mentioned to you, next slide please, that I have a colleague who's in, in Jerusalem as a Palestinian believer, and his name is Salim Munir. Thank you. And good work on that one. We're, is the, uh, this one still going around? It's finished? Did everyone have a chance to at least, did you pass it through the aisles? All right, well, just pass it across and everybody just touch it, examine the work. Maybe after service you can say congratulations, well done on that. And once it gets to you up here in the front row, just, uh, just put it down on the bench there, please. This is a definition that comes from my friend Salim. That reconciliation, and if you, could, you can read the words on the screen, say it with me. Reconciliation is the restoration of interpersonal trust in a mutual commitment to invest again in a relationship. What I love in this definition is the concept of again. That it assumes that something has become broken that was once there. And in the heart of God, that's how God has designed us to exist. That loving God and loving neighbors are, are one and the same. But as we run into conflict, that we can end up with all kinds of levels of, of distortion and brokenness in our relationships. Next slide, please. And so in the peace and reconciliation work, there's a, a way of framing this, and you don't have to squint your eyes and zoom in. We'll talk about each of these four quadrants. But looking at uh, the work of, of God's shalom as a biblical foundation, that God desires peace and, and reconciliation in four key ways. One is vertically, that, that God desires that all of us would discover a reconciled relationship with God. And for me, that happened a long time ago. Uh, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you've understood what God has done. We've just come through Good Friday and Easter and the awareness that because of what Christ has done, we have gained a restored relationship with our Creator God that lasts forevermore. It cannot be broken. And what a gift that is to have a vertical reconciliation with God. But we're also going to look at the Scriptures today to talk about how God wants reconciliation in other ways. And that's really important for us to understand the wholeness of God's shalom heart. That God wants us to be restored inwardly. That is toward our true self. When we say yes to following Jesus and we're restored with God vertically, that God gives us the gift of His Spirit's presence in our lives. But many of us have a journey of life that is full of its own brokenness, its own hurt, its own trauma. And as we come to know God, it's not all instantly made pure and well and perfect. That God is calling us toward what Thomas Merton, one of the ancient uh, spiritual leaders, said, toward our true self, not our false self. Towards the spirit, not the flesh. And more aware of where God needs to continue to bring wholeness to us and healing. And thus the work of spiritual formation or counseling can help bring healing in our inward journey. Third, that we have reconciliation horizontally, and that is between people, between individuals, between people groups, between nations, and we'll look at that. And finally, circular, with all things and all creation. So can we look at these uh, just in sequence this morning? Next slide, please. We'll start with the vertical. And so we who follow Jesus have desired that all people would, would be reconciled with God. 
We use language for this of conversion. We call this making a decision for Christ or accepting His work on the cross, Jesus' sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, that, that God would no longer look at us through our sin, but see us through the right standing with God, the righteousness of God that's available in Jesus Christ. It's a free gift that God has made possible, that Christ has made possible through His work on the cross to make us whole. And it's wrapped up in God's nature and work. Bishop Ephraim Tendero, who is a colleague of mine in the World Evangelical Alliance with the Peace and Reconciliation Network, he's a uh, Filipino-American, and he actually puts it this way. He says, Trinitarian peace comes from the God of peace, who is the author, the Son of peace, who's the agent, and the Spirit of peace, who's the advocate. And I love that Trinitarian work because we're joined with God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That reunion is a welcome where we have this restoration into the fullness of life with God. And we want to live that out and invite others into God's shalom or wholeness personally. Next slide. One of the key passages of Scripture that roots this is in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And I couldn't have picked a more difficult font to read on a slide far away. That says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace into which we now stand. And we are boasting in the hope of the glory of God. God is the one who gives us peace through Jesus Christ. And as such, we who follow Jesus have desired that all people would be reconciled to God through Christ. And we continue to labor to that end. But I just want to return briefly to uh, the passage that I referenced earlier in Matthew chapter 5. Because in terms of this, when we act Like our fatherly God. You see the words here? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And what does that mean? It means when we are involved in making peace, that we are looking like our fatherly God. It means when people look at us as peacemakers, they should be able to say, that looks like God. Because God is the one who ultimately makes peace. It is not just a humanitarian effort for us as followers of Jesus. We're invited to participate as peacemakers. But it's the God of peace who makes it happen. And I love that. Because as we look at uh, this in family, we can look at kids. And we all get a kick out of this. You know, I'm here with extended family. But we'll be gathered with extended family And my sister Stephanie has two kids, and so one of them will say something or do something, and you go, oh, I remember that in you, Steph, when you were a kid, right? We all do this, and we kind of joke about it, but what's happening there is that the mimicry that the next generation have, that children have to us in our life, and yes, I'm very much like my mom and very much like my dad in different ways. And so we discover in this word the truth that when we act as peacemakers, people can look to us and go, oh, that looks like the fatherly peace of God. That looks like the peace of God. And in this way, it is a way of blessing. And, you know, this is also true in our lives when we are not like our fatherly God. We... or or our kids are not like us in good ways, we also want to disown them. Thank the Lord He hasn't disowned us. Because that is the way where there's no blessing. When we we actually bring disruption or uh, or we bring shame uh, to our relationship with God, representing Him. And in this verse, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. There's a standing that we've been given to be welcomed into God's family that's so beautiful. And when it's broken, we see that as something that needs to be restored. So this is the root of it all, that we have received peace, but we are also called to give it. Secondly, peace comes to us internally. Next slide, please. 
And here again, the internal peace that we experience with God is to deal with sin's distortion in our lives. Or the, as I've mentioned, the pain that we have in our own journey that God wants to bring healing in. And toward our true self, not our false self. So that we're able to help one another. And the key passage of Scripture for this comes out of 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 to 20. And here it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And it goes on and talks about the ministry of reconciliation and being called in Christ Jesus to be ambassadors of reconciliation. I'm going to come back to that as we look at peace between people. But think about the internal life. The new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. And in this way, the connection here is experiencing in our true self, in our inner life, a sense of being reconciled to God and to who He's created us to be. There's something so powerful in our testimony when it's autobiographical, when we talk about the way that, that God has made us and shaped us, when we lean into our gifting, when we're serving with a true sense of our identity as children of God, and then we can pour out into the lives of others. And when we haven't received that sense of wholeness or that sense of comfort with who we are, then we can sort of fake it. And I don't know, that's happened to me a lot, where I'm not quite functioning in my true identity or my true sense of gifting, and it just feels like, oh, what am I trying to prove here? But it's such a great gift to just know who we are and be who we are in the Lord. And out of that comes the best gifting and the best opportunity to serve and bless others. That's the life that, that spiritual formation and attending to inner healing can bring us toward. So that there can be this connection to internal reconciliation that's really understood God's love. Not trying to earn God's love. Really understanding how, that God is the one who has shaped us for who we are. Not trying to be someone else. And the gift that sets us free. There's so much fakeness going on all around us. A world that is inundated with masks and with portrayals of, of ourselves that are false. And God wants to break through so that we'll be genuine and that we'll come to understand uh, that loving God and loving neighbors is also tied into loving ourselves. And I don't know if that's you that needs to hear that today, that how God has actually formed you is beautiful and wonderful. And you have gifts and you have heart and you have something that the body of Christ needs and the world at large needs. And so often we can fight to offer something we don't have. And that's not the calling. That's not the way to this inner reconciliation. Instead, it's to learn the ways in which God has shaped us uniquely and to lean into that. And for many of us, that's a lifelong journey. So I mentioned that there, there was a resource um, that can help. And in an area that has come into um, focus in recent years, next slide please, is this area of trauma-informed care. That what actually happens when we go through traumatic experiences in especially the early part of our lives, that they create an imprint and they don't allow us to function fully in our brain, but we function in our, out of the amygdala, which protects us. And some, so there's a lot of work being done, but as we're working with not only learning to love ourselves and deal with the areas we need healing, but to help others and to be more gracious and more understanding about what, what's going on with that person, that, that we can become more informed. And so this is a, a resource here. And Pastor Dave and I were talking about this, that if any of you are interested, it's a, it's a seven-session video course with a study guide. And uh, through the Peace and Reconciliation Network, it's offered for free. And Pastor Dave has said, email the office if you'd like to participate in this, because they'd like to offer it for anyone that wants to go through this. And uh, that will be sorted through the office here uh, in terms of time frame and with those that want to do this. So it's, it's something that you can do on your own. It's something that you can do with an existing group or as a household uh, or with some friends or people that maybe aren't your friends. You know, whatever you want. 
but it's available to just grow. And we've, we had a, a trauma-informed therapist who has given teaching of these sessions, and I'll just mention Brenton Diaz, because he has a role with York University, and he teaches internationally. He's a, a wonderful brother in the Lord who teaches about trauma-informed care and, and gave his gift to put this resource together to walk through these sessions uh, to help churches become more informed on understanding trauma, our neighbors, trauma's impact, and to, uh, to be more equipped to deal with that. And that's one way that we can also just then be set free, to be reconciled within and to help others do the same. So this third aspect is horizontal. When we think about reconciliation or even what, what's needing to take place between indigenous and non-indigenous people in Canada, the truth and reconciliation have given uh, action steps that different groups of people, including churches, are called to wrestle with and respond to. But in terms of that, we know that conflict transformation, learning to walk well together when there's been harm between people groups, that this is not easy work. And it's And reconciliation is a journey, it's not an event. So it's not a one-off, it's not a photo-op kind of opportunity. It's a way of saying, are there there places of brokenness, are there people that are excluded in our culture, in our society? You think about the town of Sarnia, for instance, or the wider area. You know, are there, are there newcomers that are coming here that face extreme marginalization or prejudice or racism? And how can we be peacemakers and reconcilers building bridges between people groups that have never really talked, have never really sat down together? And so in this way, we come back to this passage, and I, I won't go, ask you to go back to that slide, but in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, that we see that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And that includes the kind of cultural sins and system sins that exist where we're comfortable just being avoiding other people who are very different from us. Groups of people in our culture that we say we don't really want to do anything with them. We don't want to associate with them. And God's crying out for us with a reconciling heart saying, I've actually called you. In this verse it says, we are therefore Christ's ambassador as though God was making his appeal through us. And in that way, this horizontal uh, reconciliation happens. God wants to use us as ambassadors, representatives of God, to bring reconciliation between peoples. This can happen in our neighborhood. Something happened during COVID where I live. And that is that the neighborhood changed completely. New patterns were set of more isolation and protection of turf and strange sort of things. And it, it altered the landscape. I, you know, Christy and I and Sandy, uh, we've been living in the same household together for 26 years since the brand new development of our neighborhood. And we've had good years of cultivating relationship with neighbors and being a blessing, but also learning how to receive and, and that give and take. But something happened in a reset where there were relationships that sort of went cold. And, and we stopped lending or asking to borrow things. And we're rebuilding. Has that happened for you where you've had relationships that were fine for a while, but now there's something that happened? And it, you don't even know necessarily what happened, but there's a fracture And so how do we take reconciliation as a journey to be ambassadors of reconciled relationships between people? Now, I want to come to um, a passage of Scripture on this. I think there are are two, one out out of the Old Testament that I'm going to read and then one out of the New Testament I'm going to reference. But the Old Testament is this one. In Jeremiah 29, Israel is in exile. They are away from their homeland and in Babylon. And God uh, says, as you are here, seek the what? The shalom. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city which I've car- I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And so 
all of this work of reconciliation is a, a gift to the wider community, to people who are feeling alienation, and that we would exist as people of peace between broken relationships. Next slide, please. Reconciliation is like the heart of God that is the trunk of a tree. And this is a picture of our global team uh, with a number of invited young leaders from different parts of the world. And so there's some Canadians here, there's some people from Southeast Asia, from the continent of Africa, from the Middle East, from Europe, um, from these uh, Eastern European uh, countries as well. And as we gathered together, there was a sense of this tree of life out of Revelation chapter 22, that God is the one with deep roots who causes the tree of life in the new Jerusalem the angels showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of this new Jerusalem. And on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit in every month, and the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. For reconciliation between others, this vision that flows out of that flows from the heart of God and out to this tree whose leaves are healing to the nations. And we had this picture. There was this beautiful tree. Uh, you'll see the, the small uh, inset picture on the left is of a lantern. And, uh, and in this tree were, were lamps, lanterns, that were lighting up the tree. And we had a sense as a team that God was saying, yeah, that's a good metaphor, that we are not the tree of life, we are not the source of the tree of life. We are not the agents of healing to the nations. But boy, we are called to be salt and light. And boy, if we could be lanterns in this tree that brings healing to the nations. Isn't that a beautiful picture of what God is up to and how we can show the way? And, and so one of those lamps was actually uh, lit recently um, in February. If you go to the next slide, here in Canada. That... While everything has, you know, the news cycle keeps changing to new conflicts around the world, and there's a lot to be said for what's going on in the Gaza Strip, and every week we're getting updates on what's happening between Israel and Palestinians, and that God's heart is breaking for people who are, are being murdered, killed, who are distorting uh, the, the truth of what's happening, and there's lots there uh, of an ongoing work of reconciliation. Now, I mentioned my colleague, Salim, who's in East Jerusalem. They take teams of Israelis and Palestinians into the desert for retreats together to listen to one another, to hear from each other, and to pray for restitution. And they, they've done this with, with uh, Israeli Christians and Palestinian Christians. They've also done it with others using the scriptures. But recently, we crossed over the two-year mark of the conflict in the Ukraine, uh, this, this current uh, unprovoked attack from Russia and the 10-year anniversary of Russia's annexing of Crimea. And these unprovoked attacks are also evil. But we put together a call for prayer and action that was signed by over 45 uh, national leaders that included uh, evangelicals um, as well as Pentecostals and independent churches and Orthodox priests and Catholic groups. And we all signed this call to prayer and it's also gone to our politicians with whom we're going to meet to continue to advocate for more diplomacy and to not lose sight of what's needed in the longer story. So supporting Ukraine, and, and recently my, our team leader, global team leader, Phil, was in meetings in Uzbekistan, and he saw some people there who came from the Ukraine who heard about this letter, that it brought them hope that they were not forgotten and left alone in their struggles and in the turmoil that they're facing. And when we pray and we respond with the reconciling heart of God, God is up to something in and from Canada in a way that doesn't minimize or ignore the suffering or sorrow that's caused by, by violence or war or just uh, a standoff between neighbors. And in this, uh, we led meaningful prayers together. God is calling us together to be agents of reconciliation between people. And I wonder, as a church, as you consider your calling here within your own community, uh, but also in wider scope, 
how do we pray? How do we respond to these areas of brokenness that are going on in the world or with between indigenous and non-indigenous or between newcomers from nations where they feel scorn? That we would lean into that and be agents of reconciliation. And lastly, that we would consider the shalom of God in a circular way. And this is a, a beautiful picture um, for us to understand our, our call to live the simple way, to be, consider ourselves as part of creation. Uh, we're coming up to Earth Day uh, this month and a great opportunity. I've been asked by our Bethany Church, a sister church in Kitchener, uh, in two weeks' time to come and to preach on creation care uh, for an Earth Day focus. And that we would understand God wants to reconcile all things to himself. This next slide picks up on this theme in Colossians chapter 1, where Christ is the firstborn over all creation, the beginning of this section. Well, look how it ends, verses 19 and 20. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Now, when's the last time we preached a message on Jesus shed blood on the cross and applied it to all creation. We are the ones who bring the, the message of the cross and we're, we're primarily concerned that humans, that people would have a transformed experience. But in Christ, God is reconciling all things to himself and that we would actually stand with people who are on the front lines bringing uh, hopeful climate change mitigation and watershed and land stewardship and caring for the rural environments as we continue to face weather patterns and strange behavior going on, that God is in the business. I think many of us are infected by rapture theology where we just think that somehow this world's going to burn up and we're going to get a, a ticket out of here instead of understanding that the, the scriptures talk about the renewal of a new heaven and a new earth. And God is in the business of renewing and restoring all things to himself. So I invite us to lean into that. What is our part in that? In how we can live as agents of reconciliation to all things. And you know what? There are younger generations, Gen Z in particular, but younger generations who have this in them. Let's encourage them and strengthen that as an act of faith and obedience to the word of God and not just roll our eyes at the way that things are going. So secondly, why is peacemaking and reconciling important for every Christian in every church? I want to think about this, that our world is broken and hurting. We see fragmentation in families and communities, in our country, in our world. That's true in my life. It's probably true in yours. It needs the full work of Christ Jesus, his life-giving salvation and redemption, his restoration to God, his kingdom of peace. But you and I have been given tools and a mandate to do something about it. And so that is our aim, is that you as a congregation and as individuals would see yourselves as sent by God to be centers of reconciliation in your world and in your lives. And that we would continue to grow and strengthen in how we can participate in this fourfold picture of reconciliation. Upward, horizontal, circular, and inward. And so in that way, um, I want to bring this to a close. You can skip ahead just a few slides to the red heart. My prayer is that as we think about these aspects of reconciliation, yet yeah, just go ahead, uh, one, two, three, back one. There we go. That's the one. So I asked you to do this today, and thank you for participating. You can't take these with you because I'm going to need them again. But this is often how we think of our participation in reconciliation, that we're mending something that's broken, and we can still see the threads. But isn't it good to know that we serve and follow a God who actually takes the broken things of the world and doesn't thread them together, but makes them completely whole? And that is the, the difference between our participation, that, that this is not the goal or the end game. This is our participation with God. 
But God, in the end, is the one who makes us whole and who makes our world whole and who is calling all things to himself eventually. And what a gift it is to participate with God's reconciling heart in this world, to live as everyday peacemakers, and yet to know that God is the one who takes it further than any of us can do by bringing complete shalom, complete wholeness. Let's continue to live for him in this wider sense of participating in his work in the world. And as always, um, I'll have some uh, opportunity to talk with you out at the kiosk after the service. But would you join me in a word of prayer and I'm going to invite the musicians to come back up. Lord, we thank you again for your word today. Thank you for the vast work that you're doing in terms of reconciling all things to yourself. Lord, we confess that sometimes we've, we've made a very small picture of, how, of the work that you're doing in the world. But thank you that you are up to something that also invites us in to be reconcilers, to be ambassadors of reconciliation, to live as agents of peace. And so for each of us today, wherever we are and whatever it is that we're involved in, that, Lord, you would continue to strengthen our sense of commitment and give us courage to look at the places in our world that still experience incredible brokenness and that we would be those who would go confident in who you are and be those ambassadors of reconciliation. We thank you, Lord, for your work in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us for our closing song? Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets from the ancient in the world, from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt.
Thank you. Thank you that you've been fully present in guiding us in our worship today. And as we declare our praises to you and as we think of all that you're up to in the universe, in and through our lives and beyond us, beyond our wildest imaginations, we, we pray this big prayer. Lord, would you use us this week and always to be bringers of your shalom, your wholeness, your fullness of life, and Lord, not to hoard it as a church, but to offer it freely to others. To see our actions and our words all working together so that the shalom heart of God could be revealed to our community and that people would know that the love of God is not fake, is not narrow, is wide, is deep, is fantastic, and transforms everything. And so, Lord, uh, bless and keep us. Make your face shine upon us and be gracious to us and turn your face toward us and give us your peace. And I would add, Lord, in order to share it with others. Amen. Amen.